What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing a beer from the Noble Savage Brewing Company, and they are out of Glen Cove, New York, and this is their Psychedelic Dinosaur. So they're calling this one an IPA that comes in at 7.5% alcohol by volume. No IBUs listen, time of review, and this can is just over one month old. I'm gonna give a huge thanks, shout out once again to a very good friend of mine and viewer of the channel, Sierra Hotel, for this beer. Recently, he sent me a mixed four pack of hyped hazy beers. This was one of the four and truth be told, before a Sierra Hotel even talked about this brewing company, I had no idea <laughs> that they even existed here in New York State, which is crazy because I'm also in New York State, although they are in Glen Cove, which I believe is on uh, Long Island. But uh, yeah, when it comes to like these new hyped uh, hazy producers here in the U.S. I don't really have my finger on the pulse. Um, it's one of those things where there's so many popping up that I really don't know outside of the big ones like, you know, your Troons and your Brew Hoses and your Fidens and whatnot. So I'm really excited about this one because it has Peacherine and Rawaka and Sierra Hotel has said their stuff is pretty tasty. So I am here for it. Let's crack it open and get in the glass and see what we got going on here. Just over a month old as it explodes everywhere. Luckily, I have some uh, paper towels down here as it as it goes you know a lot of times uh, these places will do the overfills and whatnot and man, went everywhere you guys don't care about it too much uh because you're just watching the beer review but i don't want everything to get all sticky and gross so yeah that has that uh hop custard as christopher over in the uk likes to say some people call it other stuff um i'll say hop custard because i like that but definitely has that you know that milky look to it for sure so we'll put this over here and uh, yeah, looks beautiful. It has that bright, you know, hazy orange, uh, yellow color. Again, hop custard is a beautiful way to describe it. Murky turban, finger of an off-white, creamy looking head, super bright. Hold it up to the light, nothing getting through there. But it has a vibrancy to it. And on camera, hopefully it comes out good. Uh, don't have a noble savage glass, just using the treehouse uh, tiku. So anyway, let's get a nose. Okay. What the f That smells awesome, but also like nothing I've ever smelled before in a, in a hazy. I know that you're probably like, come on. No, seriously. It has a beautiful melange of different fruits. Like I'm getting peach, peacherine, right? We'll say stone fruit, peach, apricot, nectarine, something like that. There's a little bit of like a, a fleshy mango going on, some uh, citrus character, like a lemon lime, touch of grapefruit. But the key thing that I'm getting is this huge, and I'm talking huge, herbaceous dankness. And it's and it's all over the place. It also has a floral character. It's, it's almost like that old school, like I used to get it, and I think it was Summit Hops, that uh, garlic and onion kind of ranky dank vibe to it. But then it also has like a straight up marijuana uh, character to it. But on top of that, it's just very herbaceous. Like I'm getting like basil and thyme. Like it's, it's running the gamut of like all the herbaceous dankness that I have probably ever... Uh, used as descriptors in reviews. Oh God, this is bringing back so many awesome memories. And I know a lot of people be like, oh, onion and garlic and, and an IPA, what the fuck, this sounds disgusting. Don't knock it till you try Cause I thought the same thing when people used to say that, oh, I'm getting onion and garlic in here. And it's like more of like a green onion. You know what I mean? Like a green onion kind of vibe for me. But it's, it just, it works so beautifully with those, those fruit characters. Little honeydew melon. Touch of vanilla, like there's almost a creamsicle, like a like a like a citrus creamsicle in here. Like you could say lemon or lime or even grapefruit. I've never had any of those as far as creamsicle goes outside of orange, which I did not mention. Dude, this smells fucking killer, but so vastly different than a lot of hazies that I have drank in recent memory. I just want to get into this one. <laughs> Touch of a bubble gum. Probably from the yeast. I don't know. This is fucking, this is crazy. It's, it smells so crazy. Let's get into it. Cheers, everybody. Thanks again. That's your hotel. This is really good, but it's that, that green onion, garlic, ranky dang thing is on the finish. And it's so cool. All right. So the nose is screaming sweeter. Uh, again, stone fruits, oversaturated, creamy, fleshy stone fruits. 
again, like a, a, some kind of citrus creamsicle, and then that ranky dank. On the, on the palate, it's actually not that sweet, which I think is welcomed. This is fucking really good. Holy shit. I was not, I, listen, I shouldn't sit here and act surprised because obviously, like I just said, these guys have hype. I didn't know about them even before, or before um, Sierra Hotel even mentioned them to me. Um, but for this, the first time experiencing this and not knowing really anything about them, this is fucking awesome. Mouth feels higher side of medium, lower side of full. So 7.5%. Um, that's right in the wheelhouse. Uh, the mouth feel, it's soft, smooth, and creamy. Has a mild to moderate carbonation. I will say this from one standpoint. I think the one thing kind of stopping me from going nuts about this is the body mouth feel. Not necessarily upper echelon. Like uh, the Brujos beer that I reviewed from him recently. And um, the Root and Branch, to be fair. One was the, the root and branch was a triple IPA and the brew host was a little bit higher in ABV. So it's not fair, but I'm just saying I've had seven and a half percent IPAs from uh, Hot Butcher and Fidens and other places where I think the mouthfeel and the body were better than this. So that would be my one knock on this beer is that it's not the upper echelon. It's still a really nice body mouthfeel. Don't get me wrong. It's just not the upper echelon. I taste forefront, a lot of citrus. Uh, in order, I'd go lime, lemon, grapefruit hits me right away right after that that's where the stone fruits kick in peach apricot uh we'll say peach apricot mango again fleshy over ripened touch of honeydew melon uh, there's an underlying vanilla tinge which is again giving me that kind of creamsicle last vibe second half of the palate is where that herbaceous dankness kicks in and again it's green onion it's garlic it's basil it's thyme it's a little bit of marijuana dankness it's just all intertwines, and, it, and it's, again, a characteristic that I've gotten all those individual characters on their own, right? Never as a whole like this. It's like all over the place in a great way. And this finishes semi to full on dry with a moderate bitterness. There's a, there's a dryness and there's like a moderate, like dang kind of after, um, like like on the finish, like kind of like an aftertaste. And sometimes, you know, the finish will ruin a beer for me. It's really enhancing this one because it's not overly sweet at 7.5, which is nice but I just like that moderate kind of uh, bitterness with that dryness and the characteristics that are left over as well. That bubble gum did not carry over, which, eh, I take that back. I just took a sip and now a little bit of like, un, let's say undertones of like um, bubble gum, but not like too big, right? Man, this is, <laughs> listen, he sent me a four pack of hype. The Brew Host beer, really good, I understand the hype. Room Branch, really good, I understand the hype. Noble Savage, really good, I understand the hype. I get it, you know, I get it. To me, with these hype breweries nowadays, the, the hazy producers, it's not so much can you make a beer like this, how consistent are you with those beers? If this is what Noble Savage is putting out whenever they do releases, then yeah, they should be up there. Uh, same thing with Brujo, same thing with Root and Branch, and I get it. Um, so my first experience with Noble Savage, a good one. Again, my only knock on this one would be the body and mouthfeel. It's not upper echelon, but... The rest of the beer is unique is the word I would use here. It's just different. So uh, rating, oh yeah, 7.5%, you really can't tell. So rating on uh, Noble Savages is, uh, Noble, Noble Savages? Noble Savage Brewing Company, their Psychedelic Dinosaur. I have absolutely no issues at giving this beer right here. And it's cool, like the, the label, they have like a candle on there. I think they just keep this label uh, very similar. Um, and then they just change uh, the the. the whatever the sticker at the bottom to say whatever the beer is. But this beer right here, I have no issues whatsoever giving this a, a high 4.5 and go 4.6 4. out of 5. I think that's where this one lands. I think it's the same thing I gave to the Brewhouse beer. I think this would be in the 475 range if the body and mouthfeel were spectacular. Uh, as is, it's just good. So it brings it down a little bit. But this is fucking dynamite stuff right here. Like, without question, if you can get your hands on some Noble Savage stuff. And I know they're not that easy to get, apparently. So, um, yeah. Price point availability, I have no idea. So Sierra Hotel, anybody else want to chime in on what something this like this runs at the brewery i'd imagine 20 to 22 dollars a four pack kind of going right for hype stuff that's a 7.5 percent ipa and availability i'm pretty sure it's brewery only and i think they do like online orders where you have to um like excuse me go to their uh web store and like you know before it sells out you know put in an order and whatnot again i could be wrong i really don't know uh the price point availabilities with beers like this when i don't know what's going on first beer i ever had from them, i have no idea that's why i enlist the help of the viewers so if you guys know post in the comment section let me know what you thought uh if you know the information this is just um 
yeah, really good. So if you've had this one before, anything from Noble Savage, a comment section below. I'd like to hear, is there something I should try from them? I don't know how easy it will be to get my hands on beers uh, from them going forward, but you know, we'll see. Maybe here and there I'll, I'll happen into one, but uh, I just like the uniqueness of this one really good. And I have one more beer left from his uh, mixed uh, four pack of Hyped Hazies, and I'm looking forward to it. It's a collaboration between Highland Park and um, True. Troon's like top of the food chain when it comes to the hype. So anyway, huge thanks to Sierra Nevada for Sierra Nevada. Sierra, I knew I would say that. I don't think I've ever said Sierra Nevada, but I said it once. Sorry, Sierra Hotel. And appreciate him not only sending this one, but everything else. Uh, send, uh, send. I'm like a mess right now. Just I, hopefully everybody has stopped watching at this point, but call him Sierra Nevada. I'm saying weird things. Let's just say this. Great beer. Appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol to the next one. Cheers.